let me speak a bit more uh, in generic terms, right? So I think each platform shift as it is coming through is, is giving us an opportunity and also I think teaching us the necessity for being more modular right? and sort of centralize some of the common services that large parts of the banks uh, or various parts of the bank uh, want to consume internally uh, as well. Uh, so each platform shift sort of is making us more modular, a little bit more nimbler relatively, uh, and is preparing us for the coming paradigm shift. Right? So I do strongly believe that platform shifts precede paradigm shifts, and not every platform shift is going to result in a paradigm shift. So maybe there are a couple of platform shifts that happen before a big paradigm shift comes through. Now, coming back to your question, I just briefly spoke about how cloud computing and mobiles, smartphones, uh, sort of gave us a paradigm shift. Now, if you privately look at the hot topics of the 2020s, right, it's been blockchain dominated uh, for a certain time. Now, it is uh, the time for AI, uh, generative AI in specific, right? I do think both of these put together in, in their own ways um, are both a platform and a paradigm shift. But then again, coming back to our topic around ecosystem, right? So a paradigm shift happening in the ecosystem when adoption of a certain platform is to a large extent, uh, almost like a minimum viable product, there is a minimum viable adoption that is required for uh, platforms to enable the paradigm shift. So you can't just, certain set of participants in the ecosystem can't run too far ahead of the other parts of the ecosystem and expect a paradigm shift. If you really ask me, uh, blockchain or distributed ledger technology and all the assets that were created on that particular infrastructure as digital assets is an example of, I think, lopsided innovation, I should say. So some parts new uh, participants the participants in the ecosystem, A, are not uh, static, mm. right? So they're dynamic. And new entrants sometimes tend to innovate way faster than incumbents, which is natural. But if that innovation becomes a bit lopsided and certain parts of the ecosystem, they run far ahead, then you will have imbalance, right? So imbalance. And then that sort of pulls to put these participants together, right? So there is there would be some kind of a backlash uh, or a governance issue. And then sort of you then understand why certain participants were a little bit skeptical. Yeah. Then there is a bit of a reset. One of the interesting aspects is when a platform shift enters the boring phase of the Gartner hype cycle is when the seeds for a paradigm shift are sown. Right. That basically tells you that the platforms become a commodity or platform easy to adopt. And then that sort of begins uh, the paradigm shift. That is primarily where new business model and that's evolved. Uh, evolves because now platforms broadly available and that's not yet happened with both blockchain or with generative AI they're two interesting uh, capabilities I should say and especially in generative AI I think we are in the very early days so we have large language models but we don't yet have domain specific or product specific large language models yet I do think once they basically get in. There is a significant potential for paradigm shifts in how we deliver client experience. Yeah. Is there an ability to sort of design products at much more personalized level, right? So I think in the past we thought we can do mass personalization, but I think generative AI potentially can give the ability to every organization to create a product for one consumer. Because one of the marvelous things about technology is the marginal cost of delivering anything using technology um, becomes closer to zero, right? So, yeah. so you can deliver to the variants using technology where the marginal cost is low, you can create a product for one, right? So that's what I think excites uh, me about generative AI that you can do a lot more personalized experiences for client or personalized products for client. That is, you can create a product of one or product for one. Yeah. 
with a sustainable marginal cost. And that's primarily the gift, I believe, of generality where we have certain amount of distance to travel. And imagine if financial service of ecosystem can create products for one, you're becoming more inclusive. The ecosystem scope is massively increasing. There's a lot more responsibility on the technology service providers to basically get that done with proper governance, you know, adhering to regulations and being able to explain. And we are seeing that shift of explainability in AI coming. Uh, the other exciting but not so new technology is distributed ledger technology. I do think it uh, it has huge implications for how you record your assets and how you make them available for verification. Uh, and, and if you really look at any large financial institution, right, at the core of that financial institution is assets and liabilities and the way you record them, right? And you go and ask, any large financial institution today, you ask them how many ledgers do you have, the number would come in come out in thousands, right? So thousands of ledgers are kept and they are not compatible with each other, and then you basically have to create new and very specific way of integrations. And you would know that uh, you would work on projects purely to get two systems to talk to each other because they are, you know, incompatible technologies. And as more and more distributed ledger technologies, capabilities, and mostly, right? The capability influences thinking. As more of that thinking and mindset takes root in the organization, uh, I do think there is a possibility of maybe a medium size or a large financial institution running uh, completely on a programmable nature, hmm. creating programmable assets and making those assets widely available as well, right? So the advantage of programmable assets, I believe, is inclusivity, you can suddenly come back to my original point around low ticket and high volume, and that's a gift, right? So accessibility to financial services increases. And if you are, you know, if you ask me implications for wealth management, then become uh, huge, yeah. right? So for the same hundred dollars, you are going to have much more diversified portfolio because you can have low tickets yeah. uh, then, and that's a gift, that's inclusive. Uh, financial advice, right? So irrespective of how much money you have, most of our clients can have the same diversified portfolio. And that also means that investments are going into you know, different kinds of projects and those investments can be turned into assets to be owned by end consumers. Then that means that capability to finance uh, some very interesting because you're diversifying the risk away across many, many different parties, yeah. uh, potentially there will be a lot more capital available for doing many interesting things in an economy. And these are the implications of, uh, you know, I'm just, just melding technology implications for capital and also investment. But that's how it's going to work. Great. And this, it's not new, right? We've seen this when the stock exchanges were manual, run by agents, and now moving to completely digital stock exchanges. It clearly, again, brings back the point that um, for an ecosystem to thrive, all the participants and the readiness of the infrastructure is very, very important. All participants need to adopt the platform and thereby drive a mass adoption of the platform. You rightly talked about blockchain and digital assets, which is an evolving ecosystem. and. Uh, all the banks, all the financial institutions, as well as fintechs, are now looking at participating in that ecosystem. Uh, I think generative AI, um, you know, is working towards building another set of capabilities uh, on this ecosystem too. 